Because I believe that, that we, this is the day and time that we are in, amen, culture wars. And it's important that we understand some of the wars that we're, we're fighting. And I, I want you to be able to, to uh, be a part of this because this is everyday life. And I love what Hebrews 13, 1 says. It says, let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. And that's something that's important, that, that throughout these culture wars, throughout what we're talking about, uh, we need to make sure that one thing that, that is, is evident within a Christian life is love for each other, right? Yeah. Brotherly love. But I believe that we are living in, in a time that, that we need to discuss some things, that we're in the midst of culture wars, Amen. That should be an amen, because if you're not listening to the news, if you're not understanding what's going on, that we're in the midst of culture wars. And, and we are in the midst of, we need to properly train and bring up children. We need to properly train uh, our society. We need to train and bring up our, our cities and our states and our governments. And uh, there's something that we can always learn, amen? We are in this cultural wars, culture wars that, that we need to be able to bring some uh, some evidence, some truth too, amen? Yeah. And, and I've always said that, you know, uh, we, we need to discuss what's going on in the world. We need to bring it into the church, not to be conformed of it, but to align it with the word of God, to bring truth. Because if the church is not teaching truth on what's happening in the world, then the world is going to have the advantage because it's the only one that's going to be doing the teaching. That's right. right? The churches need to teach. We need to bring in what's happening in our lives, what we're hearing, what we're seeing, and we need to apply the word of God to it. You know, this is what's going on. This is what the news is saying. This is what the rioting is saying. This is what uh, in another country is happening. But, you know, let me just tell you what the word of God says. Amen? And the first topic that I want us to touch on, because I mentioned this in previous messages, and we talked about this in a message called Categories a little bit, but I'm going to dive into this a little bit more, because I believe it needs a little bit more attention, because we're dealing with this, is racism. Amen. Yeah. We're dealing with this, right? This is something that we hear. Now, all to the point where we are almost at the point where uh, we are teaching how to be a racist, racist again. Amen? Right. Now we're putting in a division instead of eliminating the division. I just want us to go somewhere here today. Amen? Because this is a topic that, as a white guy, I've been called all kinds of names. You don't understand. You, don't, you know, don't, 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 don't judge my heart until you get to know me. Don't, you don't know how I was raised. You don't know what my thoughts are. You don't know what I think. You know, I also I don't have a wife that's white. Amen? So I've seen racism. I've been on the other side of racism. Oh, we're, we're, we're going to go here because I believe as, as a culture, uh, we need to understand what racism really is. And that's the first thing that we need to do is what is racism? We need to define it. Amen. This is something that we need to define. And racism is a belief that race is a fundamental detriment of human traits and capacities and that racial differences produce an inherent sup 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 superiority of a particular race. It continues on in the definition. The belief that race accounts for differences in human character or ability and that a particular race is superior to others. And, and I took this from different dictionaries because I want us to understand. It even goes on to say another definition, discrimination or prejudice based on race. Prejudice is judging, isn't it? Yes. Oh, then it goes on to say the belief that each race has distinct and in, in, intrinsic attributes, which we're going to discuss as well. So basically, uh, it's saying that, you know what, uh, uh, one race is superior than another is, is what really the definition of racism is, correct? Whether this individual is more superior, whether that individual is more superior. And we can see this racial tension within the Bible. Unrest and division among people caused by differing racial origins. This is the biblical part. Personal identity in the ancient world was not primarily based on race, but on family, tribal, city, national, ethnic, or religious ties. So it just wasn't color, was it? It was whatever family you came from, whatever the tribe you came from, whatever city you came from, 
uh, nationality, you know, uh, whatever you came from, uh, religious ties, whatever you came from, uh, you know, that, that's defi- defining race, racial tension as well. Amen? Yeah. It sounds like uh, this generation, amen? It sounds like the time that we're living in, right? It sounds like what we turn on the news and, and we see all, we don't, we don't see the neighborhoods getting along, do we? We don't see my neighborhood where there's all kinds of different individuals, amen? And we're all playing, we're all getting along, we're all having a barbecue, we're all fellowshipping, we're all, you don't see that on the news, do you? This is the reason why we need to bring some truth to this. Because I I want us to understand that that within racism, it it, it also is defined as going that there's several different races. And and, and I'm here to tell you, there is only one race, and it's the human race. But we have several different ethnicities, don't we? We do. But there's one race. It's the human race. Is it not? And it goes on to Genesis 1:26 through 27. Then God said, Let us make man what? In our image. Then God said, Let us make man in our image. So, so what, what image is each and every individual made of? God's image, right? Amen, yeah. So we're all made in God's image. No matter what color we are. No matter which religion we are, no matter uh, uh, where we stand, where we work, what tribe we're in, what nation we're in, we we are what? All made in God's image, right? Because, see, we have to define this because racism is a demonic spirit. Amen? Racism is nothing that God has ever, ever, ever wanted us to ever think about. Amen? There was a pastor that said Jesus is even racist because of something that he did. And I'm thinking, man, you are so far from the truth. I'm here to tell you, I'm going to have to correct you because Jesus was not racist. And your scripture, you're using scripture out of context because the last that I knew... Jesus was the picture, image of what we should be, each and every individual, Jesus. So we have racism, and it's a, it's a superior race. See, we have blacks that are racist. We have Hispanics that are racist. We have whites that are racist. We have Chinese that are racist. We have Japanese that are racist. We have Brazilians that are racist. We have Europeans that are racist. You see, anyone can can have this, right? Anyone can be racist. I just want us to be be very completely upfront and, and very clear on this. But each and every individual that has the breath of life, whether you proclaim Jesus or whether you deny Jesus, you are made in the image of God. Because God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his what own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them even continues on in Acts 17 26 and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so where 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 we are all made out of what one blood one blood But then we stand around and we want to proclaim racism, amen? We want to stand on the fact that one race is superior when there's really only one race and there's no race that's superior. I want us to understand this because, see, uh, the last that I read in the words of Jesus, it comes right to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, he doesn't say whites, doesn't say blacks, It doesn't say Hispanics, Latinos. It doesn't say British. It doesn't say Russian. It doesn't say German. It says whoever. See, it pretty well covers everyone, doesn't it? It covers everyone that has a unique set of fingerprints. It covers everyone that has a unique set of DNA. It covers everyone that has a unique um, skin pigment. Amen? Because you can't have a different DNA in everyone and say that you're exactly the same because that identifies your skin color. That identifies your genes. That identifies everything about you, your unique set of fingerprints, because every DNA is completely different. If it was not different, then they could not use it in a court of law against you. 
Which brings me to the point, if they're going to start genetically modifying DNA, then how valuable will the evidence be in the court of law? Oh, that's a sidebar right there. But see, we have to look at what we're rarely made in. We're made in his image, but are we not made in, in some of his attributes and some of his characteristics and some of God's integrity? Isn't there something there that, that we should be identifying with, that, that I should have love? Amen? Let me just give you a little point of what each and every one of us was created in. And it's the fruit of the Spirit, right? We've all been created in this because this is who God is. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, right? The fruit of the Spirit is love. And we're, we're, he's breathed life into us by the Rock HaKadosh, right? By Holy Spirit. We're created in his image. And the image of his Spirit is love. So that means if the Spirit is love, that means our Father that we've been created in the image of is nothing but love, Right? So we have love. We should have characteristics of love. We should be able to have that love that portrays throughout all, amen, into every situation. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So we, we kind of see some of the DNA of Jesus Christ. We see some of the DNA of Jehovah himself, right? That the image that we're created in. How can you be created of hatred whenever a God of unconditional love created us? I want us to understand. We use this term racism. We use this term to throw it out. We use this against others. We want to march and we want to proclaim this. I'm not saying racism isn't real, but I'm telling you there's two categories of racism. There's one that is true racism that needs to be destroyed, and there's abuse of racism just claiming it just to get something for free. Come on. We're going somewhere. Because my Bible says God is no respecter of person. Deuteronomy 10 and 17, it says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. Remember, your ideology is skewed to think equality and racism go hand to hand. Your ideology is skewed if you think equality and racism goes hand to hand. It doesn't. The reason why there's racism is because people don't see themselves as equal. That's the whole problem, is we don't see ourselves as equal. I don't see you as made in God's image if I'm a racist. There's something about you that I don't like that, that I think is more superior, or so I'm going to come against you. Or maybe I just think I'm more superior. Because if that's your ideology, then it's skewed. Because you can't have racism and Equality, it, it doesn't go together. See, God made us all equal. God made us all in his image. So there's none, no one that's above the other. Do you understand? So I, I want us to understand this because we are all equal. Because it even says in Acts 10.34, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. He's no respecter of person. Do we understand that? So since we understand what racism really is and, and how God has created us, that, that, you know what, he sees each and every individual as equal. That means each and every individual has an opportunity. Did slavery exist at one time? Absolutely. Are you aware that there's slavery going on right now in Africa? There's more white individuals in slavery in Africa right now than any other individual? Can we just preach it? Can I just speak it? Can we understand that the first slave owner was African-American? Can we understand that, that slavery is completely against God? Can we see it throughout the Bible that it's not about color, amen? It has nothing to do with color. It has to do exactly where we're going. Point two, where does racism stem from? It stems from a bad heart. That's right. A heart of hatred, a heart of anger, a heart that's not after God. That's where racism stems from. Because we're all equal, are we not? 
We're all made in God's image, are we not? There's none that's superior. I mean, we, so it means we all have the same opportunity when we look upon God as our Father in heaven. Amen? I'm here to tell you, you know what? There's individuals that, that has climbed up the ladder because of God's favor in his anointing in all colors. Amen? I see great doctors that are... are, are you know what? From Saudi Arabia, amen? Or from India as well. I see great doctors from China. I see great doctors from Africa. I see great doctors from America. I see, you know, I see Americans that are black, brown, white, Chinese, but they're all Americans because they're all born here. So I don't understand our concept. I don't understand what the, the reality that we're being fed really is. We have to understand that we are fed from God's word. But see, the thing is, is we've swayed from God's word. We don't stand on God's word. So when racism comes, we don't know how to defend it. We don't know how to fight it. We walk away from it. And this is the reason why it's rampant today is because the children of God are not standing and standing righteously upon God's word and saying, not in my house, not in my community, not in my school. We're allowing it. Too many Christians, we don't want to do anything until it's knocking on our door. The problem is, is once it's knocking on our door, then we have a hell of a fight from there because the battle's too big. But we could have managed that battle if we would have stood up and stand for God's word. So where does racism stem from? From a bad heart. Racism is a learnt behavior. We're not born with it. Think about it. See, because the biblical definition is to... Be bias to influence in an unfair or illegal way conceived of as building a person's eyes. That sounds like learned behavior. It's nothing that we're born with. We're not born with racism. That's taught. If you want me to prove it, then let's take all of our kids down to the park. We'll just start with ages eight and under. I can take Joshua down to the park. He's half Hispanic, he's half white. We haven't raised him to look at colors. How we describe people is, well, you see the kid with the white shirt or the yellow hat. You see the kid with the, the sneakers. You, we, we, don't, we don't use body color to describe people. You see how they sing. You see how they do things. But, you know, I, I, I've seen it too many times. I go down to the park, and I see whites, blacks, browns, Chinese, Japanese. I see anybody that shows up at the park when ages young, real young ages, they're all playing with each other. They're not thinking of color. They're thinking about, man, let's have kickball. Hey, let's run. Let's race. And, and let's, you know what, let's do whatever we want to do that has fun. Let's climb on the bars. So it tells me that it's not something that we're born with. It tells me that it's something that, that we are teaching to our generations. Amen? It's a learned behavior. But we have this ideology, as I said before, that equality and racism goes hand in hand. It doesn't. It doesn't. So where does racism come from? It comes from a bad heart. It comes from anger. It comes from bitterness. It comes from resentment. It comes with a lack of self-confidence. Behavior or attitudes that reflect and foster this belief is racial discrimination or prejudice. Prejudice, we know, is an instance of such judgment or opinion. We need less of people's opinions, right, and more of God's word. Before we have an opinion, let's align it with God's word. Before we choose to judge, let's take a look at the plank that's in our eye before we ever attack the speck in someone else's eye. But see, racism comes because so many times we're living a life that's outside of God's word, outside of his righteousness. We're walking around with anger, we're walking around with a lack of, of self-confidence. So when I see someone else that can run the 440 faster, I'm a little upset because I've gained some weight. I don't like how I look. Or I don't like how smart they are. Oh, isn't this how we evaluate? We don't see ourselves as equal, do we? We don't see ourselves as righteous. We don't see ourselves as having an opportunity to grow. We don't see ourselves as an opportunity to get back in school and learn something or pick up a book. We, we see ourselves as defeated. And too many times when we see ourselves, do we take our lacks, our deficiencies, and we take it and we want to judge against someone else when we're really judging against our own deficiencies. 
Isn't that what racism really is? I'm just PO'd because this person does this or this person got this. Have you seen them marching around? Oh, we need this. We need this. All kinds of colors. Marching around. Racism. We need this. We need this. Well, go get a job and get that. Go back to school and get an education. Because the last I looked, there's all kinds of individuals, all kinds of different colors that are all successful because they had a heart to be successful. They wanted to do it. They wanted to work for it. Stems from self-esteem and insecurity. Lack of respect for others. This is really what racism is, and we're defining it. We're seeing this because it's all because of a bad heart, right? As racism heightens within one's life, extreme racism, people start lashing out at others about their own flaws or personal failings, which has nothing to do with the individual being accused of racism. Our lacks, if not controlled by the word of God, will create hatred towards others, We all can become something. Remember, it's a choice. Think about it. How many times have you lashed out? Because it's something that's lacking in your life or it's something that you choose not to do. When we allow anger and hatred to run rampant, it's going to create racism. Because I don't see any constructive racism. Amen? in marching around and destroying our cities and trying to knock down someone instead of looking at yourself that you're just as equal, that you still have an opportunity, amen? Ephesians 4.26 says, be angry and do not sin. Be angry and do not sin. So there's a righteous anger, is there not? So whenever something starts stirring in me, I need to start looking at why am I angry? And this is, if this is unrighteous anger, then I need to start aligning it with the word of God so this unrighteous lang- anger doesn't start lashing out and it's upset at someone else that's successful. Why do we have a bunch of individuals that are so peed off, PO'd, because someone else is driving a nicer car, someone else has a nicer house, someone else has a great job, instead of, you know what, that's unrighteous anger. What I need to do is I need to start taking a look at myself and I need to convert that unrighteous anger into righteous anger like why am i allowing satan to hold me down why am i allowing satan not to send me back to school i get thee behind me i'm coming back i'm coming back to school i'm going to educate myself i'm going to pick up a book i'm going to learn a different career i'm going to learn how to work with my hands i'm going to learn how to process and and i'm going to learn things within the computer because i'm not going to be held back i'm going to be moving forward because no one's going to hold me back and i'm not using anyone as an excuse Right? I know this is a little different today, but I I believe this is something that we really need because racism is out there, rampant. This country's trying to be divided by Satan himself within racism. Psychology Today says that it is a psychological defense mechanism generated by feelings of insecurity and anxiety. Think about that. When we become fearful, we get into a condition called xenophobia. Fear and hatred of strangers or foreigners or of anything that is strange or foreign. That's what we cultivate. We also, they, uh, you know, it, it goes even further if you study racism, is there's uh, this theory of colorism. Amen? But we can read in the biblical times, it's not just color, right? It could be from whatever tribe you come to, whatever city you live in. But isn't that, have you ever heard that? Well, you live in that city. Oh, you're just Polk County. Oh, you're just Hillsboro. Oh, you're just Atlanta. Oh, you're just New York, right? I mean, isn't this something that we do? Yes. But God said we're all equal. Aren't you glad that God sees us as all equal? Yes. That means we all have the opportunity to become what God's called us to be. So we need to look upon ourselves and say, you know what, if I don't feel successful, I don't feel like I'm doing anything, then it only can be be because of me, because I have a God that can make a way of escape. If I'm in the midst of bondage or slavery or being held down, all I have to do is give it to him, and the promotion will be mine the next time it'll come around, because he'll move the people out of the way to make sure I get promoted. He'll close the door here and open another door here. I don't know about you, but LeBron James didn't get $100 million in the bank, in the mansion, and playing like he does because he was in the midst of slavery. That should be an amen. The man wasn't in the midst of slavery. He was dedicated. He's an incredible basketball player. It was hard work. No no one, he chose no one to hold him down. Stephen Curry, 
A man of God that proclaims Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He wasn't held down. It was his hard work. He had a mind and a heart that says, this is where I'm going. This is what I want to do. See, you have a believer and a non-believer that was able to be successful because they didn't allow anything to hold them back. There's nothing holding you back except for yourself. So let's stop blaming others for your lack. Remember, let's take a look at the plank in our eyes before we take a look at the speck in the others. It also, I want to tell you, in this generation, racism appears to be used as a tool to acquire one's desires, dreams, and provisions for free instead of performing or enduring the actual work required to obtain his or her desires, dreams, or provisions. This is the generation, the culture that we're living in. We're using racism as a way to get what we want for free instead of putting the work into it. You owe me. You owe me. You owe me. God said the slothful will always be with us. He says if you want a harvest to go plant the harvest and to water the harvest and to weed the harvest, you're not held down. I'm not holding you back. You're just as equal as everyone else. You're as equal as any other color. You're as equal as anyone else that has knowledge because they studied to show themselves approved. You can study to show yourself approved. Let's stop pointing the fingers and trying to get something for free and start in, in declaring something of the enemy of racism just to, so we get what we want so we don't have to work for it. That's robbery. That's a thief. Is it not? Is anyone else done with the lies of the enemy? Or is it just me? Because there's one race. And depending which country you go to, depending where you go, how you are, you could be held back by people of any color. Any color can be enslaved. But isn't it amazing how Christians allow ourselves to be enslaved by Satan? Because really racism is really a bad heart. It's a heart that's not after God. It's a heart that doesn't see everyone equal. It's a heart that doesn't pray for others, doesn't love for others. A racist heart, it's a judging heart. And too many times we're judging out of our lack and out of our insecurities because we really coveting what they have. We're desiring what they have, right? Or we're just trying to get something for free or we're just trying to get on television. When you want to succeed and put your heart to it, you can. You know why? Because you are a child of God. So how do we destroy racism? <laughs> I'm glad you ask. We as Christians have to stop picking and choosing by what Bible verse we're gonna live by, and we need to start living by all of the Bible verses. Whether we like it or not, we're here in the image of God, and the image of God is nothing but unconditional love. That I choose to love the individual. I don't have to enjoy or like or uh, you know, take upon the sin. Remember, we're all sinners, right? We've all fallen short. But if I'm really looking through the eyes of God, I'm going to choose to love each and every individual equally. Because God does. Because when he looks down on me, he doesn't love the sin but he loves his child what if we start loving on people and truly loving our neighbors I'm not going to love the sin I'm not condoning that because you can get your hind end up off the couch and work you can read a book and learn something you can learn a trade don't tell me you can't because we're all equal here and good thing in this country, we, you know what, it's come a long ways, amen? Because we have all colors being very successful. Running multi-billion dollar businesses. Being incredible doctors. Neurologists. I mean, we have great athletes, right? We have all kinds of people of all colors, right? So how do we destroy racism? That's the third thing. Stop picking and choosing God's word. And start living by all of God's word. It says in Galatians 3, 28 through 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
So, so what is God saying? There's not Jew or Greek. There's not slave or free. Let me just tell you, there's one, and it's the creation of God in his image, and we're all equal. So we need to start living life seeing people equal. That's the reason why our son doesn't see color. I love it when he comes to me, and he's trying to tell me about a friend that he just played with at the park or something. Color never, ever comes up. No, daddy, it's the, it's the kid, with, remember, with the, the, he, he had the blue shorts, and, and then he had that yellow shirt, and, you know, remember, he was up there swinging, and, ah, remember that? Yeah, I do. And how do we eliminate racism? How do we destroy it? When we start talking and communicating, let's stop describing people by the color. Amen? Let's start using the gentleman with the yellow hat. You can even, if you want to describe me, the ugly man that's bald. Amen. It starts with us, right? I don't know. Remember the guy with the blue shirt? Remember the, the lady man that was high heels is like this? See, see, we can change it. See, we can destroy it. See, it says in Ephesians 2.19, Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So we're one, Right? And we're all covered with the blood of Jesus, right? If we're saved and set apart. So it's the same color blood, right? So we're all grafted into the same family, right? But we as Christians, we have to start looking at this. It's not Jew or Greek. It's not slave or free. It's not based on color. Everyone has an equal opportunity with God Almighty. This is how we destroy racism. You want to know how else we destroy it? Is we pray. You want to know how else we, we destroy it? Is we stand for God's word. That when it starts coming to our home, we don't allow it. When it starts coming to our communities, we don't allow it. When we say something out of order, we correct it right there. Too many times Christians, we're really good at turning around and walking the other way because we don't, oh, God will take care of it. Nah, bull crap. God's going to take care of it when his presence shows up. And you are the canister of God's presence. You're the vessel. Show up in the midst of this. This doesn't mean you have to cuss them out or stick up your hands. You can just proclaim Jesus. Let me just tell you, you think any of you are acting like Jesus? You think Jesus would do this? Take a look. Mostly everyone has a cross around their neck. I have no problem. You know what? Give me that cross off your neck. Why? Because you're not representing Jesus Christ. Let me just tell you, because that's not the attitude. I love you, but that's not the attitude. And I don't want my son to see that. And I bet you, you don't want your son to see that either, do you? We need to start standing when a racism and they want to start putting this doctrination within our schools. And this is how we're going to teach your kids. And this is the classes that we have to go through or these corporations. You know what? We need to stand up and boycott these corporations. Amen. We need to do our part. Well, you know what? If I just buy a pack of Coke, it's going to be okay. Well, you're not doing your part. You're either standing for God at all times or you're not standing for God. We're either down there marching at the doorsteps of the school board and saying, no, this is not going to happen. In fact, what I want you to do is I want you to put prayer back in school because if you put prayer back in school and get God back in, you'll eliminate everything else. But we need to start standing. And we need to start teaching our children, right? It says in Proverbs. 22 6, train up a child in the way they should go, in the way he should go. And when he, should, when he is old, he will not depart from it. So we need to start training. We need to start teaching. Problem is, half the Christians can't even quote a scripture. I'm not here, no condemnation. No, 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 I'm not. I'm just speaking the truth. We either believe it, we either teach it, we either stand on it. Or you just walk away from it. Because God's not looking for lukewarm. We either believe it and stand on it in all areas of our life. Or just walk away. But let me tell you. The reason why racism is in this country. The reason why we see it on the news. The reason why we're having to go through all these classes. The reason why organizations are doing what they want. Is because Christians have not. Have not stood up for the word of God. What does God say? This is what Jesus says in Matthew. Teach your wishes is the great commandment in the law. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. This, and the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Think about it. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to love my neighbor. And I can come against the devil, but still love the individual. So we know what racism is. And we know how God's created us. We're all equal. No one's the same color, right? We're just different shades. That's all we are. That's all we are. We're all made in his image. We're all equal when we look through the eyes of God. It's us, we, that think one's superior over the other, right? I don't know about you, but I don't want the best basketball player or the best football player doing heart surgery on me. God forbid if I ever need it, amen? We're all different types. It takes all of us. If I read the Bible, it took the farmers, it took the clay, clay makers, the potters. It took you know everyone to do their part. What if we all did our part? What if we all chose to stand on the word of God against racism? As far as me and my house, no. And that house is our community. What if we chose this day that we're gonna get involved and we're gonna stand? We're not gonna run. Schools would be different, right? We have to do our part, church. We're in the midst of culture wars, right? That means we have to fight. Well, vengeance is God's. Well, yeah, but we have to show up because we're the canisters that carry Holy Spirit. I go to the fight. Yep, that's yours, Lord, but I'm here, right? We have to do our part. And how many times with Israel did he have them go to the battle? And then he said, just hang on there. This one's mine, right? This one's mine. The enemy's gonna destroy himself. We have an enemy and it's racism. And it's for God's children to start standing up. Amen. I hope that you enjoyed the message today and I hope that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ. And if you're here and you have not and you would like to right now, all you have to do is ask for forgiveness of your sins and receive Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior and you are saved and set apart. That's all it is. And I want you to email me. I want you to email me so I can be praying with you, that I can be believing with you, that we can equip you, that we can stay in contact with you because I want to welcome you to the family. And while you're here watching right now, make sure you check us out at Peak Worship and make sure you get involved with all of our social medias. That means you like us, you follow us, check everything out about us so you can get plugged in. Amen. And we will see you next time.